Picture yourself standing on the sun-scorched plains of prehistoric Africa 300,000 years ago. Dust swirls at your feet, carried by a warm breeze heavy with the scent of wild grasses and distant rain. In the twilight, a small band of early humans gathers around a crackling fire, their silhouettes flickering against the horizon. These are our ancestors, ordinary yet extraordinary, battling a world ruled by saber-toothed cats, towering mammoths, and the raw, untamed forces of nature. How did they survive against such odds? How did their struggles, their triumphs, shape us into who we are today? This is no ordinary tale. It's the greatest survival saga ever told, a sprawling epic of grit, ingenuity, and resilience that stretches across millions of years. Today, we'll embark on a journey deep into prehistory, unearthing ancient fossils, decoding the secrets hidden in our genes, and piecing together the puzzle of human evolution. Along the way, I'll share my own reflections on what these discoveries reveal about our past and our present. Let's step back to the dawn of humanity and uncover the story that lives in our bones. Seven million years ago, in the dense, humid forests of what is now Chad, Africa, our earliest ancestors took a monumental leap. Creatures like Sahelanthropus chadensis began to stand upright, their eyes scanning the horizon over tall grasses, or their hands freed to carry precious food. This wasn't just a physical change, it was the spark of human resilience. These beings weren't merely dodging predators like leopards or hyenas, they were problem solvers in a world where a single misstep could mean extinction. To me, this moment marks the birth of our defining trait, adaptability. Imagine a Sahelanthropus mother cradling her young while navigating a forest teeming with danger, her upright posture a quiet act of defiance against a brutal world. That defiance, that ingenuity is woven into our very being. Fast forward to 3.2 million years ago and we meet Australopithecus afarensis, embodied by the famous Lucy, whose skeleton was unearthed in Ethiopia in 1974. Standing barely 3.5 feet tall, Lucy walked upright across the savannas, her bipedal strides freeing her hands for tools, gestures, or perhaps even early forms of communication. Every step you take today echoes hers, a humbling connection to a distant past. But Lucy wasn't alone in her world. Other hominids like Australopithecus africanus and Paranthropus boise shared the landscape, each carving out a niche. Paranthropus, with their massive jaws, could grind tough plants, while Lucy's kind thrived on a varied diet. The original content mentions fossils, but misses this broader tapestry. Evolution wasn't a single path, but a sprawling web of experiments, with each group testing new ways to survive. This diversity fascinates me. Picture a prehistoric African landscape dotted with small bands of hominids, each adapting to shifting climates and predators. Some climbed trees to escape danger, others ventured into open grasslands, risking it all for new opportunities. I see this as a testament to nature's creativity. Multiple species from Australopithecus diuramata to Kenyanthropus platyops coexisting and competing, their successes and failures shaping the tree of life. The original text overlooks this vibrant competition, but I believe it's key to understanding our roots. These early hominids weren't just surviving. They were laying the foundation for the human story, their struggles a prelude to our own. By two million years ago, a new chapter began with Homo habilis, the handyman. These early humans crafted crude stone tools, sharp flakes for slicing meat or scraping hides. This wasn't just about getting by, it was the dawn of technology. Imagine a Homo habilis family gathered under a starry sky, their hands deftly chipping stones by firelight, creating tools that gave them an edge over nature's challenges. To me, this moment marks the birth of human ingenuity where survival became a craft. These tools weren't just objects, they were ideas made real. 
a spark that would ignite progress across millennia. Then came Homo erectus, around 1.9 million years ago, a species built for endurance. With long legs and strong bodies, they chased prey across open plains and endured harsh climates. They mastered fire not just for warmth, but to cook food, unlocking nutrients that fueled larger brains. Their migrations out of Africa, reaching Asia and Europe by 1.5 million years ago, were nothing short of epic. The original content hints at this out of Africa movement, but let's bring it to life. Small bands of Homo erectus, armed with spears and dreams, crossed deserts, forded rivers, and scaled mountains without maps or guarantees. Picture them huddled in makeshift shelters in what's now Georgia or Indonesia, their fires glowing against the night. To me, they didn't just explore, they redefined what it meant to be human, their wanderlust echoing in our own desire to push boundaries. Fire changed everything. Cooking softened tough roots and meat, making meals quicker and more nourishing. It also brought people together, families sharing stories around flickering flames, perhaps the first step toward language and culture. I see this as a turning point where survival met community. Homo erectus didn't just spread across continents, they carried ideas, adapting tools and strategies to new environments, from the jungles of Java to the steppes of Eurasia. Their legacy wasn't just physical, it was the blueprint for human innovation, a restless drive to conquer the unknown. Fast forward to 400,000 years ago, in the icy forests of Europe and Asia, where Neanderthals, Homo neanderthalensis, carved out a life. Stocky and muscular, they were built for cold, their thick bones and broad noses perfect for hunting elk or bison in snow-covered valleys. Their brains were as large as ours, and evidence suggests they buried their dead, sometimes with tools or flowers, hinting at rituals and a sense of loss. To me, this isn't just survival, it's the dawn of culture, a glimpse of emotions we still feel today. Imagine a Neanderthal hunter, wrapped in furs, tracking game through a frozen forest, his breath visible in the crisp air. His life was harsh, yet he found ways to honor the dead, a spark of humanity that resonates across time. By 40,000 years ago, early Homo sapiens arrived in Europe, their paths crossing with Neanderthals. The original content mentions genetic interbreeding, but let's paint the scene. A Neanderthal and a Homo sapiens sharing a cave, trading tools, perhaps even stories under a starlit sky. DNA evidence shows 1-2% Neanderthal genes in many modern humans, contributing traits like stronger immune systems or resilience to cold. This wasn't just a biological exchange, it was a meeting of worlds, blending skills and ideas. I'm captivated by the thought of these encounters where two groups, so different yet so alike, shaped each other's futures. Neanderthal tools like finely crafted spear points and early Homo sapiens art like cave paintings suggest a shared creativity that laid the groundwork for our cultural explosion. In Siberia's Denisova cave, a single finger bone discovered in 2008 and dated 76,152,000 years ago, unveiled another piece of the puzzle, the Denisovans, Related to Neanderthals, they range from Siberia to Southeast Asia, their genes lingering in modern populations, especially in Oceania and Tibet. To me, this is a detective story, a tiny bone rewriting history. The original content highlights this fine, but I see it as a testament to resilience. Denisovans thrived in extreme environments, like the high-altitude Altai Mountains, passing on genes that allow modern Tibetans to live at 14,000 feet. Picture a Denisovan family, breathing easily in thin mountain air. Their bodies adapted where others faltered. Their legacy isn't just genetic, it's a story of survival against impossible odds. The out of Africa migration, starting around 70,000 years ago, brought Homo sapiens into contact with both Neanderthals and Denisovans. Crossing into the Middle East, Asia, and beyond, they faced deserts, jungles, and seas reaching Australia by 50,000 years ago with rafts built from ingenuity and hope. 
These weren't just migrations, they were odysseys of courage. The original content notes genetic mixing, but I see a deeper story. These encounters sparked a cultural revolution. From Neanderthal-inspired toolmaking to Denisovan-influenced survival strategies, Homo sapiens absorbed and innovated, creating art, music, and languages. To me, this blending was the crucible of human diversity, forging the vibrant mosaic of cultures we see today. Imagine a Homo sapiens band, painting ochre symbols on a cave wall, their stories blending Neanderthal and Denisovan influences, a prehistoric melting pot that shaped our world. To make this vivid, let's explore real stories from the fossil record. In 2013, divers in Mexico's Hoyo Negro cave found Naya, a 13,000-year-old teenage girl whose skeleton was preserved in crystal clear water. She fell into a sinkhole, perhaps while gathering food, her life cut short at 16. Her DNA links her to Native American populations, tracing their journey across the Bering land bridge from Siberia to the Americas. I imagine Naya, her hands stained with berry juice, stepping carefully through a forest before the ground gave way. Her story isn't just a fossil, it's a bridge to the first peoples of the Americas, a reminder of their resilience in a new, untamed world. Another tale comes from Tibet's Baishia Karst Cave, where a 160,000-year-old jawbone, found in 2019, confirmed Denisovan's high-altitude prowess. Picture a young Denisovan hunter braving icy winds to track yaks across rugged mountains. His genes, adapted for low oxygen, live on in modern Tibetans, like Sherpa Tenzing Norgay, who summited Everest in 1953. This jawbone isn't just a relic. It's proof of how ancient adaptations shape modern lives. I'm struck by the thought of this hunter, his breath steady in thin air, passing on a legacy that helped humans conquer the world's highest peaks. In 2003, the discovery of Homo floresiensis on Indonesia's Flores Island added another chapter. Nicknamed hobbits for their small stature, these hominids stood just three feet tall, yet hunted dwarf elephants and survived alongside giant Komodo dragons. Fossils dated 50,000, 100,000 years ago suggest they were a unique branch, possibly descended from Homo erectus. I envision a Homo floresiensis hunter darting through tropical forests, using cunning to outwit larger predators. Their story shows evolution's creativity, small bodies adapted to a resource-scarce island, proving that survival comes in many forms. DNA is our prehistoric diary, recording survival strategies across millennia. A 2020 study, referenced in the original content, found Neanderthal genes influence our immune systems, even our response to diseases like COVID-19. Denisovan genes aid high-altitude survival, while Homo sapiens develop complex language to coordinate hunts and share dreams. Each adaptation solved life or death challenges. I'm fascinated by how environments shape these traits. Neanderthal's thick bones withstood cold. Homo floresiensis's small size conserved energy. Homo sapiens' social skills built communities. Cave paintings in France's Lascaux Cave dated 17,000 years ago, and shell beads in Morocco from 80,000 years ago show our ancestors had hopes, fears, and creativity, just like us. These artifacts aren't just relics. They're glimpses into minds that mirror our own. Every human carries traces of Neanderthals, Denisovans, and other ancient kin. We're a living tapestry, woven from prehistoric struggles across icy tundras, scorching deserts, and lush islands. When I look at my hands, I see Lucy's tenacity gripping a branch, Neanderthal strength wielding a spear, Denisovan endurance climbing a mountain. This story isn't just about bones or genes, it's about connection. Our ancestors' choices, from crafting tools to painting caves, echo in our lives, binding us to prehistory. The original content calls evolution complex, but I see it as unifying. 
We're not just Homo sapiens, we're a mosaic of survivors. Each piece a testament to millions of years of triumph. This legacy goes beyond biology, the tools of Homo habilis, the fire of Homo erectus, the rituals of Neanderthals and the art of Homo sapiens show a shared drive to create, to connect, to endure. I find it humbling to think that every laugh, every story, every invention today carries echoes of those prehistoric campfires. We're not separate from our ancestors. We're their living continuation, shaped by their struggles and enriched by their ingenuity. Whether it's a Tibetan breathing easily at high altitude or an artist sketching under modern lights, we carry their spark. Here's the lesson. You are a survivor. Your DNA holds millions of years of triumph over ice ages, predators, and starvation. Our ancestors didn't just endure, they built the foundation for who we are. From Lucy's first steps to Naya's final fall, when life feels overwhelming, remember, you're built from explorers who cross seas, hunters who face giants, and dreamers who painted their hopes on cave walls. Their strength flows in your veins. Share your favorite prehistoric discovery in the comments and subscribe for more epic stories. Keep exploring, keep surviving, keep being human.